Hello and welcome to this scenes and data tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to load scenes and bring data with us between scenes. Okay, so the setup we have here is uh, made of two scenes. So this first scene is called scenes and data one. And it has our character here, which is just this character dummy male from the Cinti polygon prototype pack. And then we have this floor. So it's yellow character, yellow floor, and then in scenes in data two, we just have a blue floor, no character. The goal here is to load the scenes in data two scene, but to bring our character with us. Now, the first thing that you need to set up when you actually have these scenes is, of course, have the scene files ready, right? But you also need to come to your build settings. And here in your build settings, you need to make sure both of the scenes you plan on loading are included. So you could just drag and drop them in here. I already have scenes in data one in here. Now I can drag and drop scenes in data two and then make sure that these little check boxes are checked. You can also use this add open scenes button. All right, that looks good. Now to actually do the loading, I'm just gonna make a empty here and I'll call this our scene loader. And in here, I'm gonna add an FSM. Okay, we'll just call that FSM scene loader as well. And I'm gonna put in a load level. Now the difference between a load level and a load scene is that loading a scene will refer to an index. And what that means is that if you look over here at your build settings, they each have a little number over here to the right. So scenes in data one is zero and scenes in data two is one. So this load scene action here would attempt to load scenes in data one since that's its index. But if we don't wanna use the index, you can use load level, which will just refer to the name of the scene. So literally it's just the string here that we use to name the scene file. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of this load scene and I'm gonna select this scenes in data two, hit F2 to rename it. But instead of actually renaming it, I'm just gonna copy the text here. That way I have it exactly spelled out because it is case sensitive when we're using this load level. Case sensitive, spaces, all that. It needs to be typed out exactly the same way. So now I'm gonna paste it in here. Okay, and let's just see what that does. I'm gonna hit play. Okay, so right off the bat, Right when the game starts, the action runs and it loads us into scenes and data two. You can see up here, even our hierarchy has changed. We have this scenes and data two scene now, right? And of course our character has disappeared and it's just our blue platform. So I'm gonna stop this. Now, if we wanted to bring our character with us, you could select your character, right click to add FSM and I'm just going to put a don't destroy on load action. And this action, only has one parameter that you need to set, which is which game object it will keep with us when it loads the next scene. So using owner, we'll make sure that our character dummy is still with us when the next scene loads. Okay, so let's play that. All right, and there you have it. It loads the next scene, but our dummy is still here. All right, so I'm gonna stop this. Additive means that it'll load the scene with this next scene. So to demonstrate this, we can take this platform and I'll just scooch it over. And I'm gonna hit this additive checkbox. Okay, now I'm gonna hit play. And you'll see that both of our scenes are now loaded. You can see here in the hierarchy, we have scenes in data one and scenes in data two and both of these platforms are loaded now with our original character there as well. Okay. And you'll see that it has a don't destroy load option for this as well. So the thing loading the level can keep itself here. Now, something to keep in mind is that you have this failed event and this loaded event as a way of maintaining and continuing logic into the next scene. So for example, if we have this loaded event We'll create, create a new event. We'll just call this one next. Okay, and then we'll send over here. And we're gonna tell this to not destroy this on load. Okay, so this loaded event, it will fire off, but is for the most part a little useless unless you have this don't destroy on load. Because of course, when the level loads, if don't destroy on load is not checked, then this FSM will just disappear. We'll call this first state load level. This second state, we'll call load complete. And in here we'll have a failed event as well. We'll create a new event called failed. 
and it'll send down here where we'll say load failed. Okay. So now when I press play, you'll see that our game object is in this don't destroy on load category down here in our hierarchy. And our scene loader is still here. And this is its FSM. So it, it stuck around with us and it's currently in its load complete state. Now the reason you should use this load failed option, the reason you should make an event for this is for debugging purposes. Sometimes these things aren't always clear when you're testing your game. Having this option will hopefully raise a flag for you because it could be as simple as going to your build settings and just removing that scene. Now when I press play, It goes to load failed because our scene wasn't here in our build settings, right? This load level action was trying to load scenes and data too, but it wasn't there, so we got sent off here. This is a nice little flag to, to help prevent you from losing your mind over super simple mistakes like that, as well as some other reasons potentially. Okay, I'm gonna stop this. Okay, so what we'll do is instead of having it immediately load the level, I'm gonna create a new state and set that as the start state, throw in a wait action here, have it wait just a couple seconds, and it'll fire off to the load level. Okay, so it's just going to wait here. And then our dummy, we're going to keep this don't destroy and load, but we'll also have a float add. Okay, and it'll be a new variable called my points. We're gonna be adding one point every second. Okay, we'll call this state adding points. We're going to create a new state called not adding points. And we're going to create an event here called just off. It's a global event. And here in our scene loader, on load complete, we'll just have it send an event. And it'll be sending to our dummy. to send that off event. Hit play. You'll see that it's adding points, scene changes, and it stops adding points. But if we go to our variables, our points are still where they left off before. So those are some of the basics of loading scenes and bringing data back and forth between those scenes. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.